Good morning, everybody. So, um, I received an answer from the Holy Spirit uh, this morning, as a matter of fact. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm going to share this with you all. As I've been saying this whole time, nothing happens by accident, and we are not brought into each other's awareness by accident. Everything that has happened out here with these pastors attacking me was not by accident. As I said, these were demonic spirits that were here trying to get me away from God, get me to believe that God had abandoned me, that God didn't care about me. Um, and of course, it did not work. I only went deeper into God. So I was led this morning. Last night, I had a total meltdown and I cry, I mean I cried the tears were huge the tears were like they felt like they were this big I could literally see them falling out of my eyes they were like this big coming from my soul asking Jesus to please show me what I need to do show me what I'm not doing that I need to do I surrender everything what was shown to me this morning through this book, he, uh, he led me to the book of James. And I'm about to read this with you guys. It's, it's a very short book. It has told me what I need to do. And it has also told me what you pastors need to do. And I want you pastors to listen up very closely here. Um, you know, if you can open yourselves up, to understand that I was not brought into your awareness by accident either and you have gotten off your path and that was the reason why I was brought into your awareness you were brought into my awareness to do what you did to help drive me deeper into the Holy Spirit this is what this is there's one thing that I would like to say out here you know we are who we associate with and I, I really want you pastors to understand this. We are who we associate with. The reality is you are on a solo path. If you are genuine in the body of Christ and you are genuinely on a spiritual path, you are solo. You are solo. Nobody can do this path for you. You have to do this alone. You can associate with other people, but you must know when to cut ties. And this is what I'm about to tell you right now, because uh, this guy Daniel has not learned his lesson yet. I will put his video that he put out last night or yesterday in the description so you can hear it. It's towards the end when, when he says what he says to attack me. Uh, he called me self-righteous. This Now, this was after my video that I put out yesterday. Um, when I was speaking to the mystics community and the occult community, okay, I wasn't speaking to anybody, any pastor out here. I was speaking to the mystics community and the occult, and this is what he put out, called me self-righteous. He said, and this is how I knew it was geared towards me. He said, he doesn't like pedophiles either, but he doesn't condemn them to hell. He prays for their salvation, this self-righteous narcissist. This is, I believe, why he put this out was because he related to everything I read on the evilness of narcissists because he knows who he is. Here's what I would like to really stress to you pastors out here. This guy is bad news. This guy is bad news. If you want to help him and deliver him from this demon that he has, uh, by the grace of God, I would hope that one of you would do it. I hope that one of you would do it. And I hope that the rest of you will pray for him. But he is bad news. And the Holy Spirit brought me to this book for a reason. And you pastors will hear it once I say it. But here's what I would like for you to understand. We're not talking about any run-of-the-mill pedophile that you can think of, even these Catholic priests that are raping children, they're demonically possessed also. Nithyananda is not one of these people. Here's what you all are not understanding because you don't truly understand the spirit world. 
You don't truly understand it. As I explained to you yesterday, people will not know who the Antichrist is until it, things start going bad because he will appear just like you and me. But he will in fact be the Antichrist. This is why people did not know who Jesus Christ was because he appeared just like you and me. But he in fact was God in form. Well, this is who Nithyananda is. He's not just a man that has been demonized by a, a spirit. He is in fact a full-blown malevolent spirit in human form. And his only mission on this planet is to put demons into people, namely Christians. This is what I'm out here trying to tell you. And for this ignorant, ignorant fool to stand up there and call me self-righteous and say that he doesn't like pedophiles either, he would just pray for their salvation. I don't even have the words for this guy anymore. I don't even have the words for him anymore. None of you pastors have ever, ever encountered a being like Nithyananda. None of you. You have no clue about what I'm speaking about. But Daniel is too arrogant, too arrogant and too ignorant to understand when he should shut his mouth and stay out of somebody else's business. The message that the Lord told me to give was for the church to come together. This being led to this book is a continuation of this message. So can you understand that the Lord is actually speaking to me and giving you all a message? And this message is real and it's genuine. And if you don't choose to listen, that's on you. That's on you. I'm going to give the message as I've been instructed to do. If you are truly, truly on a spiritual path, and trying to get into oneness with Jesus, I would ask that all of you so-called demon slayers, you all banded together to attack me. I would ask that you all band together to deliver Daniel from whatever demon is, is tormenting him to make him behave in such a manner. When, when the presence of God has been shown to him, the message of God has been shown to him. And he's choosing to ignore it. He's choosing to call the messenger of God self-righteous. He needs deliverance. He needs prayer. And if you demon slayers are really doing the work of God, then you all will band around your brother and you will help him out. And for everybody else, I'm asking that you pray for Daniel's deliverance. I'm asking that you pray that the Holy Spirit opens his eyes. Nithyananda has made a conscious decision to follow the darkness. He has allowed these demons to fully take him over. He is darkness. There is no salvation for him. He has made his choice. He has made his choice. He is very high up in the demonic world. He is very high up. He is a very powerful demon. He is not some idiot person who has been possessed by a demon who rapes children. 
That's not who Nithyananda is. And this fool Daniel has no idea about what he's speaking about. And he really needs to keep his mouth shut. There are many people's lives at stake here. For his stupidity to continue the way it's continuing. By the power of the Holy Spirit, I bind you, demon. Get it out of him. Get it out of him. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I cover him with the blood of Jesus. Get it out of him. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, you can't have him. Nithyananda, I bind you. Fire of the Holy Spirit. Fire of the Holy Spirit. Fire of the Holy Spirit. I bind you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You leave these pastors alone. You leave them alone. I bind you with the threefold cord in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. To the pit. To the pit. I'm going to start with James, the book of James. James, for anyone who doesn't know, is actually a brother of Jesus. Let's hear what James had to say. Chapter 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes scattered among the nations, greetings. Trials and temptations. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. This is the part of the, the chapter that the Holy Spirit was is answering my prayer. Because I cried, I cried like I never cried before. Why is this demon still here? What do I need to do, Lord? What do I need to do? Please show me. Show me what I need to do. This is for me. Because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. <clears throat> Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. And that was the answer that the Lord gave me Sunday as to why I had to go through all of this. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. Believers in humble circumstances ought to take pride in their high position. But the rich should take pride in their humiliation, since they will pass away like a wildflower. For the sun rises with scorching heat and withers the planet. Its blossom falls and its beauty is destroyed. In the same way, the rich will fade away, even while they go about their business. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. We should never ever blame God for any bad thing that happens in our life. Everything that happens in the, in the universe and the cosmos is spontaneous. It is a result of our sin because we are by nature sinful beings. We are attracted to sin because we have original sin and we are living in the sleep in Satan's kingdom. We are a magnet to sin. It takes hard work to transcend the world. So if you're falling prey to these 
prosperity preachers who are telling you that everything is good and you don't have to do anything because by the grace of God you've been saved and that's all that that there is it is a lie it is a lie from hell you've got to work to transcend the world and get away from your sin you've got to work at this and you need the Holy Spirit there to help you and guide you God does not tempt anyone but each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed there we go because of our own sinful nature then after desire after desire has conceived it gives birth to sin and sin when it is full grown gives birth to death don't be deceived my dear brothers and sisters every good and perfect gift is from above coming down from the father of of the heavenly lights who does not change like shifting shadows he chose to give us birth through the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits all he created listening and doing my dear brothers and sisters take note of this Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. And this is also an answer to my, my uh, prayer. It's because I ask the Holy Spirit to help me control this anger that these, these uh, goons drive me to. That the foulest words come out of my mouth. I will put on this video camera and curse them with the foulest words that come out of my mouth and it's, it's like a, this demon is manifesting because I can't tell you the feelings that I have that I want to hurt these people okay so I asked the Holy Spirit crying crying so desperately last night please help me Holy Spirit help me overcome this help me transcend this and he has now I know what I have to do this is how I'm going to defeat Nithyananda and I'm not going to re relay what he showed me because, of course, Nithyananda is watching this. But I have been given the way to defeat him. Because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Amen. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you which can save you do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves do what it says do you understand and this goes for these pastors out here who are still refusing to hear the word of god saying for the church to come together they're bible thumpers the ones who are still attacking me they are bible thumpers they are repeating the word, but they have not internalized the word, and they do not live by the word. And now you are being called out by the word. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And not gently. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it not forgetting what they have heard but doing it they will be blessed in what they do those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves and this message was for both me with my anger and my cursing at these goons and for daniel we are both each other's mirrors right now sweetheart it appears the only difference is I'm the only one listening up and doing anything about it.
Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceives themselves and their religion is worthless. Religion that God, <coughs> that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Well, I have not been polluted by the world. And I am that widow who needed the protection and received none. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. Drinking warm water to the twelve tribes. Chapter 2. Favoritism forbidden this goes to all of you pastors out here and I want you to reflect on this is this is not um, this is not smearing dirt in your face this has been given to me by the Holy Spirit for you pastors you must learn this lesson and you must internalize this lesson and I'm encouraging every one of you to read the book of James on your own and meditate on it this is what was given to me for you favoritism forbidden so this little click you have with these demon slayers it is forbidden by the word of god it is forbidden my brothers and sisters believers in our glorious lord jesus christ must not show favoritism suppose a man comes into your meeting wearing a gold ring and fine clothes and a poor man in filthy old clothes also comes in. If you show special attention to the man wearing fine clothes and say, here is a good seat for you, but say to the poor man, you can stand there or sit on the floor by my feet. Have you not discriminated among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my dear brothers and sisters, has not God chosen those who are poor in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith and to inherit the kingdom he promised those who love him. But you have dishonored the poor. Is it not the rich who are exploiting you? Are they not the ones who are dragging you into court? Are they not the ones who are blaspheming the noble name of him who you belong to? If you really keep the royal law found in scripture, love your neighbor as yourself. God, how many times have I said this? love your neighbor as yourself you are doing right but if you show favoritism you sin and are convicted by the law as lawbreakers exactly everything i've been saying out here for months for whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it and I took this verse to heart for myself because no matter that I transcended the world, I have been a celibate for eight years. My whole entire life has been taught for God. Yet I'm here cursing like a truck driver at these goons. Oh, by worldly standards, they absolutely deserve it for what they're doing to me. But I should not be cursing at these people like this. I should not. And this is what I asked the Holy Spirit to help me with. And this is what he has done. Praise God. I took this verse to heart. And this is what I will be working on. See, none of us are done. None of us are done. But if you show favoritism, you sin and are convicted by the law as lawbreakers. For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. For he who said, you shall not commit adultery, also said, you shall not murder. If you do not commit adultery, but do commit murder, you have become a lawbreaker. Amen. And it doesn't matter the slightest break in God's law. When we don't love everyone as ourselves, we are breaking God's law law that includes me yelling at these goons that includes me yelling at these goons 
speak and act as those who are going to be judged by the law that gives freedom. Fear God because God does not play. God does not play. Because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Mercy triumphs over judgment. So do you understand? It doesn't matter what people do to you. That's no excuse to be breaking God's laws. And I must transcend this anger and this, 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 even though it's a demon manifesting from me, I have got to be in control of it and turn to God when I get so angry that I want to explode like this. And I have not been able to do that yet. This is what God is waiting for. This is my perfection. Faith and deeds. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes or and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and, and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? It's like these Christians out here where somebody is going through a health issue or, or some kind of bad experience in their life. These people say, oh, I'll keep you in prayer. And they don't even pray. They're not even praying people. But they'll say to the person, I'll keep you in prayer or I'll, I'll say a prayer for you. It's, it's just words that mean nothing because they don't follow through on it. What good is your faith, your proclaimed faith, if there are no deeds, if you don't follow through with it? means absolutely nothing in the same way faith by itself if it is not accomplished by action is dead but someone will say you have faith I have deeds Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. You believe that there is one God. Good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. You foolish person. Do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? And we're not talking. And this is part of what these pastors were laying their egos on. This, this, they, they believe that their demon slaying is their deeds. And we will come to understand as the Holy Spirit is showing me through this chapter. This is not what the Holy Spirit is talking about. Because what they are doing is not truly for Christ. It is for their own egos, for name and fame, to be known out in the world. It's a whole different, different thing that they're doing. It is not what is, say, what is being said in the Bible. Which is what I've been saying out here this whole time. We must transcend the world. We've been commanded by Jesus to transcend the world. This is not a suggestion. This is not a suggestion. This is a commandment. Was not our father Abraham considered righteous? For what he did when he offered his son Isaac at the altar. You see that his faith <clears throat> and his actions were working together. You see what Abraham did. Was not so that, that people on the out, outside world would admire him and adore him and worship him. The, the, the offering of your son is as personal as it gets. The giving up of someone you love so desperately as your own offspring is as personal as it gets. So for you to give up everything that you hold dear, which is what you are attached to personally. Can any of these pastors walk away from their name and fame? Can any of these pastors walk away from their YouTube pages? That is is the, the significance of what is being said here. Was 
Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together, and his faith was made complete by what he did. And the scripture was fulfilled that says Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness, and he was called God's friend. You see that a person considered righteous by what they do and not by faith alone. Let me read that again. You see that a person is considered righteous by what they do and not by faith alone. In the same way, not even Rahab, the prostitute, considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off in a different direction. As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. You are only able to love other people as yourself if you are living from the spirit man. Because if you are still in the sleep and in the personhood, you are, you are, you are functioning from Satan's realm and you are extremely selfish and that ego is huge and it's all about you. You are not able to love another person as yourself if you are not coming from the spirit man. And this is exactly what those words are saying. As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. You're giving lip service to Jesus. You're not giving your life and your heart. Taming the tongue. Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. When we put bits into the mouth of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example, Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, the world of evil among the parts of the body. Amen, amen, amen. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and it is itself set on fire by hell. Yes. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed to have been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is the restless evil full of deadly poison. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Hallelujah! This is what I am being convicted of right now. I am, God, I am being so convicted of this for myself. Out of the same mouth, Come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt, salt spring produce fresh water. Two kinds of wisdom. <clears throat> Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom, not from ego, not from the world. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. As I said, no one can hide from God he knows your heart. 
You can lie to every human being who sees one of your videos, but you cannot lie to God. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. It is worldly. I'm going to read those two again. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, unspiritual, demonic. So all of these prosperity preachers, as I said, this is they're twisting the gospel. This does not come from God. It is false doctrine. It is false doctrine. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. Submit yourselves to God. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You desire but do not have, so you kill. You covet, but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. And this goes right to what I've been saying about these prosperity preachers. God will not send you thousands of dollars in your bank account so that you can go and get deeper and deeper and deeper into Satan's kingdom and, and build up your greed and your lust. God will never do that. God will only answer his prayer that are in accordance with his word. All of these people out here with big names who are rich, who have all of these things out here, who are telling you, send them thousands of dollars and God will send you thousands of dollars. You got to sow the same seed that you want to grow. So if you want money, you send in money and God will give you money. That is not the truth. That is not from God. That is from Satan's kingdom. That is from the world. And here it is in the book. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives. That you may spend what you get on your pleasures. You adulterous people. Don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity? against God. Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. And this is what I've been vomiting out here for months now, saying the same thing all over, all over, all over, all hoping one day that you all will hear me. Or do you think scripture says without reason that he jealously longs for the spirit he has caused to dwell in us. But he gives us more grace. That is why scripture said, God opposes the proud. The proud has a massive ego and the ego is of Satan. The ego is of the world. The ego is of selfishness. The ego is edging God out. God opposes the proud and God opposes the ignorant. But shows favor to the humble. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. And purify your hearts, 
you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Get on your faces and cry out to God to forgive you. Get on your faces and cry out for forgiveness and repent. Isn't this what I told you a year ago? Repent or the Lord will allow you to face what's coming for you. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. Brothers and sisters, do not slander one another. Anyone who speaks against a brother or sister judges them and speaks against the law and judges it. You are in fact judging God. Every single day you called me a witch and a demon, you are calling God a witch and a demon. Are we starting to get the picture now? So now you just call God self-righteous. Are we starting to get the picture now? When you judge the law, you are not keeping it, but sitting in judgment on it. As you've heard me say over and over again, how they have thrown God off the throne and they have put themselves on the throne to sit in judgment. Every single thing I've said out here was spot on, accurate, and correct. Every single thing. There is only one lawgiver and judge. The one who is able to save and destroy. But you who are, who are you to judge your neighbor? Boasting about tomorrow. Now listen, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go do this or that city. We will go to this or that city. Spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why? You do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you want to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes. All such boasting is evil. If anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is a sin for them. Warning to rich oppressors. Now listen, you rich people, weep and wail because of the misery that is coming on you. Your wealth has rotted and moths have eaten your clothes. Your gold and silver are corroded. Their corrosion will testify against you and eat your flesh like fire. You have herded you have hoarded wealth in the last days. Look, the wages you failed to pay the workers who mowed your fields are crying out against you. The cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord Almighty. You have lived on earth in luxury and self-indulgence. You have, you have fattened yourselves in the day of slaughter. You have condemned and murdered the innocent one who is not opposing you. Hallelujah. Patience and suffering. Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains. You too be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. Don't grumble against one another, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. Brothers and sisters, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we count as blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance 
and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Above all, my brothers and sisters, do not swear, not by heaven or by earth or by anything else. All you need to say is a simple yes or no. Otherwise, you will be condemned. Do not make any vows or oaths with anybody for anything, for any reason. Because you are in the sleep, you are of Satan's kingdom. You are literally making a vow and taking an oath with Satan. A simple yes or no is all we are commanded to do. The prayer of faith. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call to the elders of the church to pray over them, anoint them with the oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being, even as we are. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. My brothers and sisters, if one of you should wander from the truth, and someone should bring that person back, Remember this, whoever turns a sinner from their error of their way will save them from death and cover over a multitude of sin. Which is what I have been trying to do for you pastors out here for a year now. Let me read that to you one more time. My brothers and sisters, if one of you should wander from the truth and someone should bring that person back, remember this. Whoever turns a sinner from the error of their way will save them from death and cover a multitude of sins. Amen. I pray that every single person hearing this will pray for Daniel Adams. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will take the, the covering off of his eyes. And I pray that he will be delivered from this demon that is inhabiting him. The Lord has commanded that he wants his church to come together. Your arrogance and ignorance is of epidemic proportions. You do not know anything of the demonic activity that goes on in Hinduism. You do not know the extent of danger that human beings are in. As you sit there calling me self-righteous and saying that we should pray for pedophiles. The only thing is you're not praying for a pedophile. This is a high-ranking demon. This is a high-ranking demon. And no, he is not. He does not want anything to do with Jesus Christ. He's out to destroy anyone who loves Jesus Christ. And although you preach end time things going on here you don't fully understand that you're in the middle of the end times right now and you will be one who takes the mark of the beast and I ask all of you demon slayer pastors to get around your brother and pray for him that he gets delivered and I pray that all of your eyes be opened by this video the end times are here and we are under attack the Lord said he wants his church to come together. Heed the warning and stop this arrogance and this ignorance and wake up out of your sleep. The time is now. You'll be blessed.